no nationwide lockdown after considering the interests of rakyat. Two hospitals taken over by the Health Ministry under the emergency ordinance. Good afternoon, you're watching Updates at Noon with me, Azlani Adani. Appointment slots for the second round of AstraZeneca vaccine shots have been open for booking just now at 12 noon. The COVID-19 Immunization Task Force CITF in a statement informed that a total of 1,240,000 doses of the vaccine is offered to the elderly. As announced earlier, the bookings are only open for those aged 60 years and above for now. The vaccine injections would be administered at appointments between 7 June and 27 July for the first dose at eight AstraZeneca Vaccine Administration Centres, PPVAZ. The PPVAZ are located at the City of Spice Convention Centre in Pulau Pinang, Prasada Johor International Convention Centre in Johor Bahru, Borneo Convention Centre, Kuching and Institute Kemahiran Belian Negara Miri in Sarawak. Furthermore, the others are at the World Trade Center Kuala Lumpur, University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur, University Kebangsaan Malaysia and Ideal Convention Center IDCC Shalam in Selangor. Those interested in booking their slots may do so at the website shown on the screen. CITF also informed that those who had registered under the waiting list during the booking of slots on 2nd of May will be automatically included in this round of the AstraZeneca vaccinations. A nationwide total lockdown under the Movement Control Order MCA was not implemented after taking into account the interests of the people, especially the poor and B40 groups. Senior Minister for Security Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said there has been concerns regarding small business owners which may be severely impacted by a full economic shutdown. Pendap pendapatan hidup mereka secara harian daripada perniagaan yang mereka laksanakan. Jika kita tutup lagi, bermakna mereka tidak mempunyai pendapatan harian lagi. Jadi inilah merupakan pertimbangan daripada kajian. <coughs> Waktu PKP 1.0 kita, kita dapat dengar dari media sosial dan sebagainya melaporkan ada keluarga yang terpaksa makan nasi dengan air garam saja untuk hidup. Ini merupakan satu perkara yang real yang berlaku di kalangan rakyat kita terutamanya golongan miskin dan golongan B40. In order to determine the health needs and welfare of the rakyat, the government has established a special task force. It involves the Health Ministry, Finance Ministry, the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, the National Security Council and Bank Negara Malaysia. In a related development, Section 3 of the Emergency Ordinance has been applied to take over the new hospitals that have not been used to treat COVID-19 patients. Tang Sri Dr. Nuhisham informed that two hospitals have been taken over for this purpose, the Cyberjai Hospital and University Kebangsaan Malaysia UKM Children's Specialist Hospital. Hospital Pakar Kanak-Kanak UKM ada 243 katil dan 20 ICU, katil ICU. Dan boleh kita menggunakan untuk kesiapsiagaan kita untuk menerima pesakit-pesakit COVID-19 yang perlukan ICU. The Health Ministry had also asked private hospitals to increase their ICU capacity to 124 beds compared to 104 previously, with a usage rate of 60%. In addition, Tan Sri Dr. Nohisham said other strategies included creating a unified command centre responsible for looking at the integration of ICU beds, postponing elective surgeries and referring non-COVID-19 surgeries to private hospitals. However, he stressed that increasing the number of beds and ICU was not 
the absolute solution to address the pandemic and only public health action could flatten the COVID-19 infection curve. Therefore, he appealed to all Malaysians to assist the ministry by imposing self and family restrictions for two weeks to break the infection chain and allow hospitals to have more room to treat the increasing number of patients. Malaysians are encouraged to wear double face masks and a face shield in crowded and high-risk public areas. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nohisham Abdullah explained that the use of fabric face mask is not recommended at hospitals. Instead, a three-ply medical-grade face mask is required. At the moment, the government has not made it compulsory to wear double face masks among the riot while in public. Jadi kalau kita berada di tempat yang sesak dan berisiko tinggi adalah amat digalakkan untuk kita memakai double face mask dan juga face shield. Baru-baru ini ada laporan di Lancet penerbitan mengatakan virus COVID-19 merebak bukan hanya melalui droplets tetapi juga airborne. Dan dengan itu pemakaian face shield itu digalakkan terutama di tempat-tempat yang berisiko. Meanwhile, healthcare workers in hospitals are encouraged to use medical grade three ply masks or N95 masks and face shields whenever on duty at COVID-19 wards. This includes duties at intensive care units which must be applied along with full personal protection equipment (PPE). Following the National Security Council's MKN decision to tighten the standard operating procedures SOP, the passenger capacity for all modes of land and sea public transport services will be limited to 50%. According to a statement by Transport Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong, this directive will take effect on 25th of May. However, air passenger and cargo services are exempted due to the current low passenger capacity. Airlines and passengers also need to comply with strict SOP set by the MKN and the Health Ministry. Dato Sri Dr. Wee insisted that public transport is an important service, but at this time, it is more important to reduce gatherings and movement of people. Relevant agencies under the ministry would update the travel schedules, including limiting the service frequency for buses, ferries, rail and trains. As for taxi and he-hailing services, Datuk Sri Dr. Wee said each vehicle is limited to a maximum of three people, including the driver. The same rule applies for four-wheel drive vehicles and vans. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Apa khabar semua? The National COVID-19 Immunization Program will be rolled up soon. To those eligible, I urge you to register and get vaccinated according to the schedule given. Getting vaccinated is very important to achieve herd immunity while preventing the pandemic from spreading further. For more information on the vaccination registration, you may refer to your My Sejahtera application. Let us protect our beloved nation together from COVID-19 by getting vaccinated. Lindong diri, lindong semua.
With that, we end today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story, no national lockdown after considering the interests of Rakyat. Don't forget to tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10pm on My Free Views Saloran Brita RTM Channel 123. You can also stream the channel via YouTube or RTM's Click web portal and mobile app. I'm Aslan Yadani. Stay safe and thank you for watching.